Ray Lisa. Good afternoon. It's uh, three thirty. I call a court and public safety of March fifth order. Roll call, please. Two three months of family. Commissioner Garzinski. Here. Commissioner Engel. Here. Commissioner Hughes. Here. Commissioner Mahoney. Here. Commissioner Nash. Here. Commissioner Sabo. Here. Commissioner Stolen? Here. Commissioner Wilkins? Here. Commissioner Cross? Here. <clears throat> Next item on the agenda is the approval of minutes of February 5th, 2013. So moved. Second. Any questions, corrections, concerns? All in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Opposed? Uh, motion passes. <clears throat> Next, item on the Next item on the agenda is public comment. Anybody in the audience got any comment? Please come forward and state your name for the record, please. Thank you very much, Commissioners. Uh, you know, I'm an advocate of the jail. Uh, we need it in the worst way. Uh, oh, it's Scott Plummer. Excuse me. I used to that. But anyway, uh, I just hope that when you, I know that they've done their due diligence, but I want you to take into consideration the employees and what you're going to do when you move that parking lot that much further away. And not only that, why this construction site goes on. Where are all of the construction workers going to park? Where are they going to put all their trailers and all the material while they're building this jail? It's just something that it has to be done, but we need to set aside, maybe talk with the city about closing those streets off for why it's being done, because you're going to have a real mess there. So I just want to put my two cents in, and I really want the jail, trust me. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? Seeing none. Uh Items for consideration. <clears throat> CPS 13 slash 03 dash 06 circuit court authorized increase in hourly wage of Judy Carnes. So second. Uh, any questions? I do have one question. Um, will her wage reduce back if she's not the one that's selected to serve in that position when the new judge comes in? Eric Stevens, the circuit court administrator, um, if she desired to have that position full time and was appointed by the um, newly appointed judge, um, yes, it would go back. to Because uh, she's outside, my understanding, personnel rules, she's outside, of, she retired a long time ago. So she's outside of personnel rules in regards to a rehire. Um, because she's been gone so long. So if she came back in, yes, it would be at that lower step where we made a motion second or third step we can do that too but it'd be an entry level position she has absolutely no desire whatsoever to work full time again once she's done with this so anybody else thank you anybody else all in favor of the motion say aye aye, aye. opposed motion carries <clears throat> Next item for consideration is CPS 13 slash 03 dash 07, Sheriff's Office. We accept the jail and juvenile tra transition. So moved. Second. Second. Any questions or concerns? Well, if I would like, if I could, uh, you know, um, uh, former Commissioner Plummer brought up a very good point. That's something that I've been bringing up all along. It's, it's a big concern of mine uh, with that parking situation. Um, it, it's almost two city blocks for some of our employees to potentially be walking. And, Sometimes the weather's not the best around here, believe it or not. So, uh, you know, that's, those types of things are, are one of the, some of the things that I'm worried about. But I will say this, uh, having been involved in this, uh, in this community in public safety for over the last 21 years, uh, this jail has been, uh, I think, a, an ugly mark uh, on this community, the jail issue. And uh, it is really, uh, it, it's nice to see, number one, that we've identified the need for this jail. Uh, number two, uh, that uh, the, the funding, our financial people are telling us that it's that we're able to do that, and uh, and we have the plans set in place, and uh, that's why I will be voting in favor of this uh, motion. I would like to make a motion to suspend the rules and allow our QAW and the financial folks to give us a little overview of the, this proposal. Second. Okay, we got a motion to suspend the rules. Uh, all in favor say yes. 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 Opposed? No. Motion carries. <clears throat> Thank you. I'll hook up my technology here. Hope that it works. Uh, for the record, I'm Joseph Morak. 
with RQAW Corporation and uh, passing out hard copies of the presentation uh, is Jim Escamilla from Bison Associates. Uh, and this presentation is exactly the same presentation that we gave February 21st to the uh, Jail and Juvenile Transition Center Committee. So I'll go through this for the benefit of those that haven't had the opportunity to see it. Uh, back on February 21st, we came to the committee with a single jail option and a single juvenile transition center option, which was a, a major victory considering all the alternatives and so forth that uh, we have looked at uh, over the past several months. And so that's what I want to present to you. And then uh, when I'm complete with the presenting the project and so forth, I think Keith will be up here talking about the, uh, the finance <coughs> of the proposed project. So the first thing I'll talk about is a little bit about the jail, to show you what the, the jail scenario is. Um, the, the jail, proposed jail project is an addition and renovation of your existing jail. And uh, the diagram that's up on the screen now is, is like if you were to slice a section through the buildings, uh, I thought this was the easiest way to describe to you what uh, is going, what functions are going in which buildings. Because we have uh, components that will be housed in the basement of the Hall of Justice. We have components that will be housed in a completely renovated existing jail and components that will be housed in a completely new addition across Pine Street and then connected to the existing jail with a tunnel. So this bottom line here, this, this bottom represents the entire jail project. Basically in the Hall of Justice, the basement of the Hall of Justice, right now you have 160 detention beds in the Hall of Justice. Those will be removed in their entirety by the completion of the project and the lower level of this building will be completely renovated to house the sheriff's offices. That will be the administration, patrol, investigations, and so forth. And so what we will have is you currently have the sheriff's office housed in three different locations. We will all consolidate them into a single location here in this building. And then so they will fit basically in the basement of this building and uh, portions of the basement and portion of the first floor of the existing jail. So they'll be located in one location. In the existing jail, the top two floors, the second and third levels, which are now housing basically on the second level, the third floor, some housing plus your kitchen and so forth, the top two floors of the existing jail will be completely gutted and renovated to inmate housing in the form of dormitories and classroom spaces to, uh, to operate programs for the inmates in those two floors. So right now you have a number of cells and so forth. The floor plan is all cut up. That will all be ta taken out. The floor plan will be opened up to provide better observation and so forth and more staff efficient layout in uh, dormitories on levels two and three. The first floor will house the public visitation when visitors come to the jail for visiting. Uh, they will come in the first floor of the existing jail. Uh, the corrections administration and some areas of the sheriff's office will remain on the first floor and as I said, the basement of the existing jail will house uh, functions of the sheriff's office. Then across Pine Street, there will be basically a, a three-story tall building. It will operate as a two-story building because the cell blocks will be tiered. But the second level and mezzanine, uh, this letter G in yellow, will be basically a 302-bed housing pod up on the second and mezzanine floors above the first floor which will house a new intake and booking area, new kitchen, laundry, and medical services area for the inmates. Then the building addition across Pine Street will be connected with an underground tunnel into the basement of the existing jail. Primarily it will serve that tunnel serve a couple of functions. One, moving inmates between the buildings, primarily inmates from the new building and going to court. And it will also function of moving food, uh, medical services, and things like that back and forth between the buildings in a secure, uh, private manner. So what does this look like in plan? Uh, this is a plan of two blocks. Basically, this building here on the left is the Hall of Justice, the building we're in right now. 
This building here is the existing jail. Uh, this street here, right, running north and south here is Pine Street. So this is the new building. This red area is the new intake and processing center. A new kitchen and laundry and a new medical component will be new construction east of Pine Street. This yellow rectangle here represents the location where future expansion can occur at some point in time in the future if and when you need to expand the jail again. So one thing we don't want to do is have to go through this process again to figure out where we're going to build it. You don't want to paint yourself into a corner if, if and when you need to expand in the future. So there is the, the opportunity to uh, expand the facility quite significantly if need be in the future. Until such time that future expansion occurs, uh, this entire remainder of the block, about two-thirds roughly of that block, will remain parking. And we're indicating an underground tunnel here that will connect from the intake and processing center of the new addition over to uh, tie in to the existing jail about the location of the uh, loading dock. Can, so we, can we ask questions now? I'm just curious about the tunnel versus the sure. Oh, I'm sorry. He's the chair. Go ahead. Yeah, I, I know that there was talk of an overhead yes. block versus a tunnel. Yes. And the tunnel, and I, you want to explain why the tunnel was chosen? Sure. That was generally the, the preference of the committee and the sheriff's office. There was only about, the difference between a bridge construction and the tunnel construction was only about $100,000 difference in cost. Um, but there, there's two issues that, or a couple of issues that the tunnel was preferred. One is it's more private, more secure than the bridge. Another issue is the bridge would have to have a certain clearance on the street to allow the street to remain open, which is the whole intent of the bridge or the tunnel. And the floor levels would, you know, the bridge would be very tall, it wouldn't line up with floor levels very well, in that it requires some extra movements up and down. Because what we're doing is we're escorting prisoners oftentimes. So the opportunity if in the tunnel, we'd have to have less number of vertical movements, uh, uh, moving prisoners from one building to the other. Then generally it's thought that the maintenance on a tunnel would be a little bit less expensive than a bridge. Um, you won't have to deal with painting and windows and, and things of that nature. So the tunnel became the preferred uh, option of the sheriff's office. Commissioner uh, Hughes? With the tunnel, isn't there going to be an uh, added expense of moving the underground utilities that we have under there right now? Though? Yes. The, in, this budget includes, I think it was $530,000 to relocate all of those utilities. Um, once design is started, it's possible that maybe all the utilities don't necessarily need to be relocated, but we've planned and budgeted for it. But even including the $530,000 to the <coughs> utility relocation, it was still $100,000 less than the bridge. During the time of construction, renovation, the prisoners that we had, what is the game plan for them? Yeah, probably the way the project would be phased, the new construction would be performed first. Uh, so you'll have basically between the housing pod upstairs and the intake and processing center, that's 372 beds in that addition, which is equal to the number of beds you actually have now. But in the meantime, you still have, during construction for a period of time, you will still maintain the 160 beds that's in the basement of this building until the existing jail, it's like Chinese checkers, you know, you move these things around and then the next would go in and renovate the existing jail and then come in and move the hall of, uh, renovate the hall of justice last. But there will always be adequate number of beds through the course of construction by phasing the project that way. Okay, the uh, next plan, again, this is the plan of the basement of the hall of justice and the basement of the jail is primary sheriff's office functions. The second floor of the building, the, the building to the left here is the existing jail, will be, as I mentioned, completely gutted and renovated in dormitory space and classrooms. The uh, housing pod, the new building, again, will consist of 302 beds on the second and third levels, and two classrooms and two indoor-outdoor recreation areas, all on that second floor of the addition. Yes. With the classrooms that are going to be in the existing jail, will 
Will that entail moving people back and forth to attend those classrooms? No, the classrooms in the existing jail are designed for those people housed in the existing jail. There will be, I think, a hundred and uh, under the full project, 192 beds will remain in the existing jail, and we'll have the classrooms for those people, and then we'll have the classrooms uh, in these two classrooms in the new pod for those. Uh, then the third level again of the, the existing jail is uh, renovated completely. So you'll have a completely new jail structurally. Uh, the building will, will keep the existing structure, will keep the majority of the existing envelope, but the interior walls, all the mechanical electrical systems, everything will be completely gutted and replaced in the existing building. And where's the outside recreation? The outside recreation, there's uh, in the existing jail up on the second floor, or in the new jail on the second floor, this area, this area right here over the roof of the Sally Port, um, we, we've kind of structured, even though we're proposing this as a single project, we structured the bidding process as a base bid and an alternate, but which I won't get into a lot because it complicates things. But these two areas right here over the top of the vehicular Sally Port in the holding area, there are two indoor outdoor recreation areas located on that floor. And the way they work is these areas will have tall ceilings, like 20 foot ceilings. Uh, they will have a roof over them so they will, be, they will be able to be heated and cooled and waterproof and things. But there will be sections large like windows on the outside of the wall that will have an operable shutter on them and a security screen. So that shutter can be opened and fresh air and sunlight and stuff can be allowed in it will qualify, meet the standards as uh, outdoor recreation, even though it does have a roof over the top of it. And these openings are up high so that uh, inmates can't be seen. When they're in the recreation areas, they can't be seen from the outside uh, building. Yes? I have a question on the existing jail. In the renovation on that, is the foundation underneath the existing jail good enough to redo that whole thing? Yes. Yes. Structurally, the building is pretty stout. Um, what what makes the jail difficult to guess continued use as a jail is that there's a lot of walls and the way that the cell blocks are configured now, it's, they're very, very difficult to observe. You only, the only way you can see anybody is continue to move around and you only have a certain amount of visibility at any given time. So by scraping all those out and opening them up into lesser secure dormitories and then uh, you, we have better visibility. And then the new addition will be primary cells. You know, one single uh, person cells, two person cells, four person cells. And it will allow us to do lesser expensive construction in the existing building. Okay. Uh, we've, I'll stress that we, there has not been any design started. The design process has not started, not gotten to this point in time. But we've prepared a couple of three dimensional graphics to give you an indication of what this addition, how it will work and what it would look like. And again, to the left here, this is your Hall of Justice. Uh, this is the existing jail. And in this particular rendering, we did that at such a time that you know, we could show you if you did a, a bridge as opposed to the tunnel, it would look something like that going over Pine Street. And then you have a basically a three-story tall building uh, on the east side of Pine Street. And then you see that there's uh, continuous parking behind the building. Uh, this is a, d a different angle of it, and again, you can see the, the parking that would still exist uh, east of the new jail addition, and people would come to the Hall of Justice from that parking lot along this sidewalk here and cross the street pretty much as they do now. And this is a view uh, looking over uh, across Walton Street. And uh, this is uh, a view from cross Walton over the top of the existing jail. Now the one of the things we're going to do, uh, this is the, on the inside, the, the entrance to the jail will not be off of Walton Street anymore, it'll be off the parking lot. And I'll go, I'll go back here a second. Um, going back into the existing parking lot here, uh, you can see that this is the entrance to the jail. So the entrance to the Hall of Justice is will remain where it is. The entrance to the jail for public visitors will be right through here. So uh, this parking lot still will serve very easily those entrances, and we're not going to have to have that entrance off of Walton Avenue anymore. Have the 
The entrance for the booking, the, the vehicular sally port is, is here off of Walton. So we have, we'll have a drive, we'll have a drive through sally port and we'll come off of Walton and exit back off onto Walton as well. The, the existing sally port will be removed or is The existing sally port will be renovated become the new lobby. That will become the, the, new, the new front door. <coughs> Uh, any other now one of the things I want to show too again since design really hasn't started yet I've included a couple of images and photographs and stuff from other projects to give you an indication of what the character of, of the jail might be and this is a floor plans to demonstrate some of the concepts that uh, we recommend employing into the facility uh, first of all you notice that the cells go around the perimeter of the, uh, the facility we recommend that this facility be designed as what we call a double envelope design. That the, uh, these cells we're showing here, this is actually from the Kalamazoo County Jail, which is nearing completion now. But you have modular steel cells around the perimeter of the building. And behind those modular cells is not necessarily the outside wall of the building. There's a four foot wide plumbing chase that runs, runs all the way around the perimeter of the building, allowing easier access for maintenance, for plumbing, and electrical, and things like that. And our philosophy is if you make it easy to do maintenance on the building, maintenance is more likely to happen, as opposed to you know, having tall, small, tight spaces that are very difficult to work in. Then the outside wall of the building becomes simply an environmental enclosure. So no longer does your jail have to have these skinny little slit windows and everything where from 10 miles away everybody says, that's the jail. It doesn't have to look like a jail. It can look like anything you want, but it's still secure. And the other benefit of the double envelope is you don't have visual communication between inmates in their cells and people out on the street. That there's windows in the building, there's windows in the cells, and there's windows in the exterior wall, but the two windows do not line up that people from the street can see into the cells and vice versa. So it increases the security, it makes it a little easier for the staff to operate the facility and, and control the behavior of the inmates. Then we also have an elevated control room here in the center which you can see observation from that control room into any of the cell blocks it is, is very easy, uh, no blind spots. It's a much different animal than the existing linear jail that you have now. Uh, this is an exterior of a, another downtown jail uh, that we did. This one happens to be in Columbus, Indiana. This is actually about the size that your pod would be. This is about the height, about the size of, of what this building would be across the street. So again, it doesn't have to look like a jail. Um, this is uh, one of the side entrances to the building. And it, it, interestingly enough, you see this, this brick building and so forth. It's actually precast concrete. So you can do a lot with the materials. Uh, this is a typical cell block. This is a cell block from another jail project. This uh, happens to be a 24 bed cell block. The cell blocks in the new addition will range from roughly 20 beds to 40 beds. So you have 20, 24, 32s, 40s, different size cell blocks, so you can classify prisoners uh, alike with each other and put them in different size groups. Your smaller cell blocks are for more secure inmates. Your larger cell blocks are for your more minimum security type inmates. But as you can see, this is typical of the furniture, the cell arrangements and things. You notice that the stair on the right-hand side over here has open risers, so if there's an inmate behind the stairs, you can see them. There are, there are no columns, there's no blind spots, there's no corners. This is a view from that control room. As I mentioned, uh, the, we recommend the control room be placed about 10, 12 feet above the floor. You're looking down into all these cell blocks. So from a single point, you have this kind of view into all of the cell blocks. Again, this is that same 24-bit uh, cell block. You notice uh, the tables, they're stainless steel tops. Some of them have game tables like checkers and chess uh, etched into the stainless steel. Uh, this is a view from that cell block back to the control room. You can see this, this glass area over here with the window that's slanted out is actually the control room. So in this particular design, you have a single control room that can observe up to 302 people from a single point. That's significantly different than what you have in your existing jail. You can see like six at a time because you always have, you have to move around so much. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. And wheels will be brought here. 
Meals will be brought into uh, the, the door. Uh, this, this is the door between the cell block and the uh, corridor. That door will have a food pass in it. So there's multiple ways that the jail can be operated. You can open the door, you can bring food into the jail. Uh, most likely, you will food feed through the door, where the door will have a food pass in it. You open the food pass and you can pass trays one at a time through the door, and the inmates will uh, eat at these uh, tables in their day room. And then when the, you pick up the dirty trays, it's the same way. The inmates bring it back to the door, feed it through the food pass one at a time, put it on carts, and it gets wheeled back over to the kitchen. Uh, this is an interior view of what a control room might look like. Uh, and again, you can see in the through the windows beyond here, you can see the cell fronts. So you have you know, glass cell fronts and so forth. You can see into the cells, uh, not completely, uh, but you can see into the cells fairly well from the control room. Uh, this is a, actually a four-person cell. Uh, this is this is actually from the Kalamazoo County Jail. It was taken just a couple of weeks ago. Uh, this is actually standing in the shower. One of the things we're recommending, too, is that every cell has a toilet and a shower in it. And our philosophy there is if you have four people using a shower rather than 30 people using a handful of showers, they're going to stay cleaner. Uh, the inmates will take care of their own showers better. You, have, uh, you won't uh, communicate as many diseases and things like that uh, by having so many people use common facilities. And we've demonstrated in the past it's actually less expensive to provide a shower in every cell than it is to, fight, to provide group showers out in the day room. And the reason for that is every cell already has a toilet in it. So with a toilet you have hot water, cold water, and a, a sanitary line. You already have in the cell supply air and exhaust air and light fixtures and all that. So putting a shower in each cell actually reduces the cost of the project increases the security, increases privacy, especially in, say, the female cell blocks. The females don't have to walk out across the day room with wet feet and, and so forth, back and forth between their cell and shower. There's just a lot of operational advantages to having a shower in every cell. Then this is that plumbing chase. As I mentioned, behind the, the, the wall to the left here is the back wall of the modular cell. And the wall on the right is actually the exterior wall of the building. And in between here is your maintenance chase. So all the plumbing, the duct work, the electrical. Uh, it's a wide enough hallway you can uh, push uh, tool carts and stuff around uh, to make the maintenance happen. Any questions on the jail before I move to the juvenile that, transition center? That wall, the, to the back wall of this cell? Yes. What is that made of? Just port, uh, port kind in of this particular case, um, the, these are modular steel cells, which are basically made with steel framing and